think one of the goals, maybe even fantasies of every homesteader is to be as self-sufficient as possible. One of those goals for us, and I think a lot of others, has always been the fascination with growing your own grain so you can make your own bread. I'm gonna kind of walk you through that here in this video. So this area behind me, we planted our potatoes in this year. We were trying to do the roost out method. It didn't work very well. I'll link that video below in the description and you can check it out why it didn't work well. But what we used as well is some straw that we got from a farmer and we didn't let it rot. So as soon as we got the round bale, we started putting it out on top of our potatoes as mulch. The problem with that is with hay or straw, there's always some seed left in it. That's why you wanna let it age. So we use that, we put it down as mulch and we started getting wheat growing. We harvested basically this basket full of wheat. But one of the problems we did have though in this area is we didn't have it fenced in. So the chickens continued to go in here and peck away at the wheat and eat all our grain. We collected enough though to make almost about three pounds of, this is basically just the top half, the heads. I spent last night cutting all this off because what we're gonna do is put this here in a bucket and separate, I guess, the berries from the rest of the chaff. So separating out the grain, the berries, the seeds from the rest of the plant is one of the big issues with growing your own wheat. What we're gonna do here is we got a home-built solution. I saw it on the internet, we're gonna try it out. Because normally when you do something like this in the old days, they took a wooden flail and all of this would be laying on the ground on a tarp or on the barn floor and you'd beat it with a stick, the flail, and that would knock all of these seeds, berries, grain away from the rest of it. And then you have to separate that by willowing, what, what, I don't know. It, basically, you drop the seeds and the wind blows the rest of the stuff away. So what I saw on the internet is a home-built flail. And the way we're gonna do this flail, similar to what I saw on the internet, was we're gonna take a bucket. We're gonna get this bucket clean though. But we have the bucket here. Instead of using a tarp and beating everything with a wooden stick on the tarp, what I've done is I've built a chain flail that attaches, gonna attach to my drill. And what I used here was an old paint mixer. So the paint mixer attaches into the drill. I cut off the swirly, the two spiral swirly things here. So we just have the bottom. And then I took some chain with the grinder and I cut out little notches here. So this will fit over the two sides of the paint mixer. And then I squeezed it down on each other with the vise. So it pretty much stays there. We can drop that into the drill. So what is gonna happen is we're gonna stick all of this here into the bucket. I've got a lid that's gonna fit on top. We'll put our little homemade chain flail down inside. And that will Eat all the berries, the seeds, the grain, and hopefully separate it from the rest. And then we'll take another bucket and we'll dump the stuff into the other bucket with a fan going. And hopefully that'll blow away the rest of the, the chaff, the excess stuff we don't need. So for anyone wanting to do this at home to make their own or to grow their own grain and then make their own flour and then make their own bread, I don't recommend cutting the tops off 
unless you're doing it this way because then there's more space in the bucket but if you have another way to flail I've seen some like small small scale flails that you can get but uh, too expensive for us right now so we're just gonna try this method see if it works and maybe after that we'll upgrade to something better next year or the year after if we're gonna go ahead and continue to grow more of our own grain all right there we go so we got the bucket full we'll see how this is gonna work with our lid and our homemade flail. So again, this was a paint mixer. So it fits on the drill and then I just attached the chains on the bottom. We might have to switch to the electric drill just to give us some more power as well as spin it a bit faster. All I did is cut a hole in the plywood and then put some screws on the edge so it kind of just fits down snugly on the bucket, prevents everything from flying out. Take a look and see what's happening here. See if it's working or not. Yeah, I'm starting to see uh, a whole bunch of berries, seeds, grain down at the bottom. So what I might do, I might switch to the electric just to get it going faster and flail it better. That's looking pretty awesome. That might be as good as we're going to get it from what I see. Yeah, they're looking good. So what we'll do now, we'll go grab another bucket, we'll set up the fan, it's around here somewhere, and we'll Try and dump on, dump this from one bucket to the other with the fan on and see if that works to get rid of uh, all the excess stuff. So we've got a pretty good breeze growing, blowing out here. So I don't know if the fan is actually going to do anything. We'll just try and use the wind and do it. Unfortunately, what I noticed is there's some seed all around the bucket too, so we lost some. I don't know whether it was just, I should have done it slower or lower or something. So with a bit more playing around off camera, I think I dialed the fan in perfectly. Watch this. So we'll go inside, try and clean this up. I might try and put it through uh, one of our strainers or something like that, or just pick away at them. We'll see how it goes, but so far it's looking pretty good. We did lose a bunch of seed out on the driveway and right here. So the chickens are gonna have a great time picking away at this. Uh, I'd be interested to find out how much I actually lost, but uh, we'll weigh this up too. We were at, I think it was, um, two pounds 13 ounces in the clear jug with everything attached so we'll see what we've got uh, with this little bit here all right guys so here's where we're at 
we went inside for a while after doing the, I forget what it's called, but you know, trying to separate the actual grain from the chaff. And I'll have to look it up, but we finally have our seed, our berries, our grain that's clean. It, uh, it required some hand picking and time. So right now at this point, I would say if you're doing small batches of wheat like we did, uh, again, I think we did, maybe it was 10 feet by 30 feet, I think, something like that area. And it was just accidental. So it's not like we planted it. It just came up from the straw that we had purchased from mulch. And I mean, it's not bad. So this has come out to uh, one pound, eight ounces. So I believe that's a pound and a half. And I looked it up and that should equal five and a bit cups of flour, which is good because we use anywhere from three and a half to four and a half cups of flour for our bread. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this made into flour. So this is my first time ever doing this. Uh, I picked this up on uh, Amazon. I think it was like under a hundred bucks, something like that. Maybe it was a bit more, if I remember correctly. So I think I have the settings right on it. We're gonna go ahead, put some seed in. Cool, that fits the whole thing. And we'll go ahead and start grinding. See how this, uh, see how this works. First thing I notice is I'd like something to be a little more solid. So like if I could get it set up on the kitchen island inside, that would be great. So what I can say now, looking back on the time we spent kicking the chickens out of the uh, wheat field, kicking the dog out, protecting it, harvesting it, drying it, uh, cutting it up so it fit in the bucket, building the thre threshing thing, separating the wheat, separating the chaff from the grain, and now doing this, it better be some damn good bread that comes out of this. That's what, that's my thoughts right now. Let's do this again, see if we can get it ground down a bit more. So that's on the third time, and it's looking pretty good, but I think I'm gonna try it once more. Looking at it falling out, you can definitely tell that the grinder has done its job. I think it's pretty much the same as, you know, if you get whole grain flour in the store, probably what, what it looks like. There we go, guys, that's done. Uh, I'm gonna make some bread out of this tomorrow. So I'll probably make this one video and then you can tune back in to see the bread making video. I'm done, that's it. It's been a long day. So my overall impression though is this Victoria uh, grind grinder works really well. I did four grinds on that. And I'm really happy with the way it came out. It was hard the first time, but then it gets easier as you keep going. However, again, uh, the amount of work that has gone into just producing this amount of whole grain flour, I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> and, and this grain mill might be up for sale soon, but um, what, what I, 
really wanted to do is see if it is possible to see if we can grow our own grain, harvest it, and then turn it into bread. After tomorrow, when I do the bread, we'll know for sure, but um, so far everything's looking good. Just a lot of work. I think if you had a larger scale, um, not like a field where you need a combine or something, but even something where you know you could buy a small threshing machine or something like that where you know you're scaling up just a bit more than we have then I think it would be probably worthwhile especially if this was uh, powered electric instead of manual it would make a big difference too so thanks again guys we'll talk to you soon